corner clearance is a brand new strategy that has been developed to optimize the roughing of internal corners. Based upon the corner finishing strategy, the corner clearance adds in a depth of cut to allow the tool to gradually step down into the material, picking away the corner. This new approach to roughing out corners should eliminate the time consuming and tedious approach that we previously had to use whereby we created several corner finishing toolpaths with subsequently smaller cutters and then had to run those toolpaths one after the other to gradually remove the material. Now we can do one toolpath that goes from a very large radius in the corner down to a small radius in the corner safely. OK, let's open a project and take a look at an example of the new corner clearance toolpath. The strategy is accessed from the 3D area clearance tab on the strategy selector. It is primarily a roughing strategy, but there are options on the form to do a final finishing cut, so it could also potentially be used as a semi-finishing stroke finishing approach to machining corners. I have a toolpath already created, so let's just have a look at the graphical user interface for the strategy. As I said previously, similar to the corner finishing strategy, we have steep regions and shallow regions, and each of those regions can be either cut along the corner or perpendicular to the corner. We also add in a depth of cut as well as a step over. This depth of cut is used in conjunction with the corner detection to, deter to determine how many passes is required to machine into the corner. The same as in corner finishing, the reference material is defined using uh, the previous cutter. One important feature of the new corner uh, clearance strategy is the stock management page. This allows us to check the corner clearance toolpath automatically against the stock model to make sure we're not plunging into any unmachined stock or excess material that we may have missed which could be potentially dangerous and cause tool breakage. Let's uh, zoom in a little closer and have a look at one of these toolpaths. I have the toolpath already created to save time. If we look from the side and just zoom in around the corner of this boss region, and if I draw the rest material in place, here we can see the depth of cut that has been defined for each pass. And as you can see, the tool starts from outside the material and steps across with the depth of cut and gradually works its way into the corner. In this example we're going from a 16mm diameter ball nose down to a 4mm diameter ball nose. Let's now take a look at a steep region. So I'm just going to spin the part round and zoom into this region here. OK, rather than uh, try and look at complete toolpath and work out what is happening, I've isolated a single pass. So we can see clearly the method behind the machining of uh, steep regions. If I simulate from the start again, slow the simulation down, we can see it uses a trochoidal, <coughs> a trochoidal approach to gradually pick away the material, moving in by the depth of cut each time till it gets to the right into the corner and then retracts back out. 
To finish off, we're going to do a view mill simulation <coughs> of a local region so we get a good impression of how it combines the machining of the steep regions and the shallow regions. So I have a toolpath, construction toolpath already created to machine away this local region. So simulate from the start. Switch on our view mill simulation. Just fast forward through that. This first raster toolpath is purely to remove the material so we can see clearly what's happening with the corner clearance toolpath. Okay, so now we can move on to machining of the local region of the corner clearance toolpath. So this time we'll slow down the simulation a little bit, switch on our tool and then start. So as we could see in the wireframe simulation, uh, it starts at the top of the corner and gradually works its way down vertically into the bottom of the corner each time picking away in the corner, into the corner using that trochoidal motion. Just pause the simulation and increase the speed so we can see what's happening in the opposite corner and on the horizontal shallow regions. Okay, so we've jumped across to the opposite steep corner. So it will do the steep corners obviously before it does the shallow corners. And it's using exactly the same approach. And in a second it will move across and it will start to do the shallow regions. So we can see on the shallow regions it's starting obviously from outside of the material uh, from each edge and working its way into the corner using the step down again as before.